Oh, dear Heavenly Father, our Lord God, our Father, it is such a privilege, Lord, that I can call you Father. That hits home with me more than calling you God, because I know you're God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, everything. But calling you Father just touches my heart, that I can call you Father, Lord. I pray that you be with us now. Be in our presence. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. We need to hear your words. We need to hear you. We need to be in your presence. We need to hear your words. We desperately, desperately need you, Father. We love you. We love you. We want to live for you. And the only way we can do that is by listening to your words, Father. So thank you. Thank you for this time that we can get together. Be in your presence and listen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We need to be ready. This is what this... Sermon is on is the Lord's telling us we need to be ready. He's told us, he has shown us several times in his word we need to be ready. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, we was reading about how people sleep. And we see there's different kinds of sleep. Sleep, you're dead. And sleep, as a Christian, you're a Christian but you're not walking with the Lord. You're not doing his will. That's another kind of sleep. And then you have Christians who have died. Their body's in the grave. Their spirit's already up with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's what the Lord said. So their bodies are in the, are in the grave. But one day they'll get their new glorious father, body. Amen. So there's three different kinds of sleep. Now we'll go back to First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 7. For they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night they that sleep are the lost people in the night is time when they get drunk and we know that most mostly everybody who gets drunk is usually at night time now there's a parable that the lord shows shows us what he's speaking about it's in luke Chapter 12, verse 40 through, 42 through 47. And the Lord replied, A faithful, now this is Jesus speaking, A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibilities of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. Amen? I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all of of all he owns. But if the servant thinks my master won't be back for a while and he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk, the master will return unannounced and unexpected and he will cut the servant in pieces and banish him with the unfaithful. And a servant who knows what the master wants but isn't prepared and doesn't carry out those instructions will be severely punished. The Lord prays. He's plainly speaking to us here. Hey, if you're doing my will, amen. Praise God. But if you're not, punishment is coming. Now, if you're a Christian and you're not doing his will, punishment is coming. You'll make it to heaven, but punishment is coming. Now, if you just lost, your punishment is hell. That's it, hell forever. Like he says, sleeping and getting drunk, that's of the night. That's what people do at night. Sleep is not, is not doing the will of God. It's not doing the will of God. They're both sin. You're not doing the will of God. You're getting drunk. They're both sin. They're both sin. Verse 8, But let us 
who are of the day be sober, put it on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Amen. Because we are of the day, meaning we, we walk in the light. That's what he's saying right here. We're walking the light. Walking with the Lord, being sober. That's being sober is walking with the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's being sober. That's what he wants. And we Christians, we do the opposite. I'm talking about Christians. We do the opposite. Maybe we're not getting drunk. But we're not walking with him. Like I said, when you're not walking with the Lord, that's sleeping. You're sleeping. You're not doing your ministry, which he's given us all a ministry, which I've shown already. He's given us all a gift. He can't use us. So if he can't use us, we're sleeping. We're sleeping on the job. Of course, speaking about the breastplate of love and the helmet and the hope we have of being saved, comes from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 through 18. Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Praise God. We'll be able to stand for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand. Amen. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having showed your feet Preparation of the gospel of peace. Praise God. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darks of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication and the spirit being watchful to this end with all preference and supplications for all saints. Amen. We must watch. We must watch. We must be sober. Being equipped with, with his armor. His armor. Which is his power and strength. Amen. Amen. We have it. I've always said that. The spirit of God lives in us. So we have his power and his strength. Just like a soldier. Football player. A guy who... Motorcycle rider, they all wear helmets to protect their head. And who's our head? The Lord. So we need to put on the Lord to protect our head, our mind, our hearts. We need to put on the whole armor of God to protect us. Amen? He shows us when we need to flee temptation. He shows us when we need to flee it. And if we do confront it, it gives us strength. Some temptations we can't flee from. Some. Some hit us and it's there. But he gives us the strength to stand. He used the word stand several times. To stand. We need to stand just like Moses telling the people in Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. And Moses said to the people, now, this is what Moses said to the Israelites. Do not be afraid. Stand still. Amen. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See what the Lord can do. Amen. Amen. Which he will accomplish for you today. Amen. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord will fight for you. Amen. Amen. Do we need to fight? Uh, he fights for us. All, right. we, all we need to do is stand. Stand. What do you mean, Jesse, Jesse? Stand. Stand on his word. Believe the words of God. That's what he's saying. Stand on my words. Just stand. 
There's no physical fighting or anything like that. We just need to stand on his word. Amen. Amen. Psalms 46.10. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Amen. Again, the Lord says, be still. Stand. People who fight the fight themselves, they're in the flesh. We don't have to fight the battles. We don't have to. We just remember, we just remember his words. Okay, Lord, you said and stand on it. Whatever the situation might be, remember what the Lord said. I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's a big one to stand on. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. When the Lord said never, he means never. Praise God. This is the way we stand with the whole armor of God. And the armor he has given us is his word. <laughs> Praise God. It's his word. His word says to fight the devil. The way to fight the devil is in James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. This is the way we fight the devil. Verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Therefore, submit to God. Submit to his words. Live by his words, and the devil will flee from us. Amen? That's what he says. It's, verse 8, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen? Amen? Just get closer to the Lord, and as we get closer to the Lord, he gets closer to us. The more we want him, the more he comes into us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. But our part we need to purify our hearts. Our hearts got to be in the right place. And if our heart is with the word of God, we can stand. We can stand on his word. And that's all we need to have power and strength. That's all we need. The Lord made it easy on us. Praise God. Uh, verse 9, for God has not appointed us to wrath. Praise God. Amen. He has not appointed us to wrath. But to attain salvation by our, our Lord Jesus Christ. By who? By Jesus. We get saved by Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There is no other, there's no other person, no other thing that can save us. The only one is the Son of God, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We had the wrath of God at one time. We had it when we were lost. Mm -hmm. We were going to see his wrath until we gave him our life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We are saved from the world. We're saved from the flesh. And we're saved from the devil. Amen. Amen. And that gives us life. Yeah. That gives us true life. Praise God. We are rescued from his wrath. Amen. Amen. That we truly didn't deserve. Yeah. We truly didn't deserve it. But he loved us so much. He loved us so much. He gave his son so we could escape his wrath. Amen. Amen. Praise God. John 3, verse 35 and 36. The father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Mm. See what I'm saying? <laughs> when we were lost, the wrath of God was going to be on us. Right. Romans 5, 9. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, his blood, Jesus, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Through Jesus, we're saved from God's wrath. And his wrath, God's wrath, Believe me, you don't want to be a part of it. You don't want to be a part of it. But we're saved through Jesus Christ from God's <clears throat> wrath. Everyone who, who is claiming to be a true born believer, Jesus says in, in Revelations 22, 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Amen. And what is his reward? <clears throat> Genesis 15.1 After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, 
Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. This is our reward, okay? I am your shield, your exceeding great reward. God is our reward. For walking with him, doing his will, God is our reward. He's our exceedingly great reward. He's our shield from everything that is bad. Everything that is bad that wants to come to us, everything that the devil throws at us, he is our shield. As long as we stand on his word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God he is good. Now I'm going to be using Matthew 24 and Mark 13. It's on the same su subject, but they both say the same thing, but some use different words. But they mean the same. Mark 13, verse 32 through 37. But of that day and that hour know, knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Now, that day, he's speaking about the verses above when he returns. That's what that may, that, that day, that's what it means. He's on his return. He's bringing judgment to the ones who have rejected him, the ones who have rejected him, the ones that didn't want to give their heart, their life to the Lord. Those are the ones he's going to reject. They didn't want to live his way. Those are lost people. Lost people are people who do not want to obey the Lord. They do not want to obey the Lord. Because if they obey him, then they got to live like he says, and they don't want to do that. So they reject him. <clears throat> On that day, he will be judging those who don't live for him, that don't live for him. Second Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 79, and to give you... The Christians who are troubled, meaning for accepting the Lord, rest with us, us, all other Christians. When the Lord Jesus is re revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in the flame of fire, taking vengeance of those who do not know him. Lost people are also those who don't, not only are those that do know him, but don't want to live for him and for those who don't know him. And those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These, now listen, those who don't want to live for Jesus, those who want to do things their way, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction. And that everlasting destruction is hell. From the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his power. Now this is, this is for lost people. If you, this is for people who don't want to obey the Lord. We can escape hell, yes, but we have to live by the word of God. Lost people don't want to do that. When Jesus said no one knows when this is going to happen, not even him, not even Jesus, we don't know when the Lord, when uh, God is coming. As the son of God, he didn't know. Yeah. As the son of God, John 1 Verse 1 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word is God. Amen? The Word is God. The Word, the Bible, the Scriptures are God. Verse 14. In the Word, the Scriptures, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. So Jesus is the word. Right. Jesus is the word. So whenever we read about the word, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus was with God. Jesus is God. That's what it says. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And we just seen that the word is Jesus. And the Jesus was with God, and the Jesus was God. That's what it's saying. Amen? Amen. Now back to Mark 13. Verse 33, take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. If Jesus doesn't know, <laughs> if Jesus didn't know, for sure we're not going to know. I don't care if you're the most intelligent person who can figure things out. You're not going to figure when Jesus is coming. Because it says only God the Father knows when he's coming. 
Verse 34, for the Son of Man is a man taken a for a journey, for the Son of Man, so we're speaking about Jesus, for the Son of Man is, is as a man taken a for a journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and who's his servants? If this is talking about the Son of Man, who's, his, who's, who's Jesus' servants? Christian. We are. Amen? Amen? And to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Now this shows the Lord has given us a gift for everyone to work in. It shows it again right here. Jesus commanded the porter, and the porter is the servant, to watch. Watch what? Well, verse 35. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Again, Jesus tells us we don't know. So if you're trying to figure it out, forget it. Quit wasting your time. You know how many men we've had where Jesus is coming mm -hmm. on such a day? Right. Ay, ay, ay. That right there, when they say that, I know not to listen to them. Mm -hmm. I know that. These two verses, Jesus is saying he can come at any time. He can come while I'm preaching right now. He can come right now. That's how close it is. Amen? Amen. That's a praise of the Lord. That's a praise of the Lord. He can come even now. We should watch like he's coming today. Amen. Like he's coming today. We wake up in the morning. We pray and we want to be in his will. We pray we want to please him. Well, we do that because what if he comes that day? What if he comes today? Well, if he comes, I want him to catch me living for him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Verse 36, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Jesus is saying, I don't want to catch you not walking with him, yeah. with me. This is what he said. I don't want to catch you not walking with me, not doing whatever gift I gave you. Because he gives it, like I said, he's given us all a gift to do his ministry. And one of the, one of the ones he gave, he gave all of us is witnessing. That's one gift he's given all of us. We all have different kind of gifts, but there's one gift we all have, and that's the minister about Jesus. Amen. Tell pe and why wouldn't we want to tell, Jesus, uh, tell people about Jesus? Why wouldn't we? He saved us. He saved us from, from many things, not only just from hell, but he saved us from many things. We were slaves to the sins. We were slaves to these sins. If you're an alcoholic, you were a slave to alcohol. You were a slave. You couldn't quit. Right. If you smoked cigarettes, you couldn't quit. You're a slave to sit. Whatever. Whatever had you and you couldn't let go of it, you're a slave to. Right. And that's what he's freed us from. And that's what we need to tell people. If they're depressed, if they're in the, uh, fighting, whatever kind of battle it is, Jesus has freed us from us. From that, And that's what we need to tell others. Hey, you can be saved. You, the Lord can save you from whatever it is. And not only can he save you from whatever it is, but also you'll end up in heaven. He saves you from hell when you give your life to him to give you the strength to overcome all these battles that we take. When we find them ourselves, we can't win. The devil is stronger than every one of us. None of us are stronger than the devil, except those of us who have Jesus Christ in our heart. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> Verse 37. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. all he's telling all of us, watch. He's I'm telling all of y'all to watch. Amen? Amen? The word watch means he's warning us. And because he's warning us, that means he loves us. Yeah. Amen? The Lord is warning us because he loves us. Jesus is speaking to the Jews, but it's for all believers. That's what he said. But this is for all, unto all. He's speaking to lost people also. Watch. Watch. You've heard about me. You've heard about me. Now listen. Those who have ears, let them hear. Amen? Amen. The question is, do you truly believe he's coming back? 
Do we truly believe he's coming back? The way I can tell is by verse 36. What is your lifestyle? What is your lifestyle? What is our lifestyle showing to the Lord? Is it showing that we're walking with him and we're awake waiting for him? Like he says, or are we sleeping? Which means we're doing our own thing. Are we doing what other people, friends, family want us to do? Our lifestyle is going to show if we're awake or we're sleeping. Doing his will or not doing his will. I'm not saying that those who believe are going to walk a perfect life. We're not going to walk perfect. We're not completely perfect yet. Not yet. Amen? Not yet. Until we go to be with him in heaven. Amen? That's when we'll be perfect. But right now, he wants us to be perfect. And being perfect is walking with him. In God's eyes, being perfect is us obeying him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The more we walk with Jesus, the less we sin. Right. I mean, that's just... The more you get closer to the Lord Jesus, the less we sin. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, let's remember verses 37 through 34 through 37. We don't know when he's coming, right? But he says to watch. We're going to look at some of the parables from the Lord, and we're going to see why he tells us to watch by his warnings. We'll also see the wicked will be punished and the saved will be glorified. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, let's continue in the same story in Matthews 24, verse 35 through 48, and then 25, verses 1 through 13. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The Bible's forever. The Bible, the word of God is forever. That's why it's still the best-selling book. It's been here for how long? Hundreds of years. And it's still the best-seller. Amen? Amen? His word is not going to pass away. Verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Again, he's showing us we don't know when he's returning. We don't know. Verse 37. But as the day of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What was Noah doing during this time of building the boat? What was he doing? Second Peter 2 5. And spare not the old world, but save Noah and eight people, yeah. which was his family. Which was his family. A preacher of righteousness. Noah was a he was building the boat, but he was a preacher of righteousness. Amen. Preaching the word of God. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. He was preaching to the people, warning them. <laughs> he was warning them yeah. about Jesus. He was warning them, if you don't repent, just like John the Baptist, if you don't repent, you're lost. And when we're lost, we're going to see the wrath of God. We're going to see that they totally ignored the warning. In the time of Noah, they totally ignored the warning because they went about life as usual, doing their own thing, doing their own thing. We have Christians today, that's what they do. They do their own thing, living for themselves. And a lot of them don't even know what the Word of God is because they don't read it. And if they do read it, that's all they're doing is reading. They're not studying. God said study. Study of his word, not just read it. People who tell me, oh, I've read the Bible twice this year. Yeah, so what? But Jesse, come on. No, we, we're really. The Lord said study. He did not say read. Read it like, a, like you read a book. He said study his word. Study so we can understand. And when we understand, he makes it simple. That's what he says. Amen? Praise God. Hmm. Verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, 
There were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. This is what it's going to be like today. This is the way it was in the time of Noah. But now that he's saying today is going to be like that time of Noah. You might wonder, well, what's so wicked about what we're doing? You know, uh, eating, drinking, getting married. We'll see later what he meant by this. We'll, we'll get to that. Verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Amen. Who got taken away? People think that was Christians yes. that were taken away and the lost people were left. The ones who ignored the warning from the Lord. They believe that's the ones who were left. And in verse 40, then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. Verse 41, two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. The same thing here. When Jesus returns, we will be left. What, Jesse? Yes, we will be left because we will be in the millennium. Remember, the millennium is here on earth. So we're going to be left here on earth because that's where the millennium is, here on earth. Amen? That's who's left. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I used to believe it the other way, but then he, showed, he opened my eyes and showed me, no, Jesse, the ones that are left are my people, my Christians, my believers. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. 42, watch therefore, for ye know not what, your, uh, what hour your Lord doeth come. Noah told them Jesus was coming. But he didn't say when. He didn't say when. No one. I guess that makes it weak. He says Jesus is coming, but he don't tell them when. And since he don't tell them when, they're thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, right, he's coming. Except his family. We should look at it being his coming, we should look at it as being very exciting, very exciting that Jesus is going to take us out of this garbage hole that we're living in. Right. Amen? We should be excited about that. Especially when we, we can, after this teaching, we'll see, you know what? The Word of God shows Jesus might come today. Amen? Amen. Praise God, He might come today. Yeah. And what a rejoicing in my heart that will be, in all of our hearts. We should be full of joy and gladness. Do we look at his coming that way? Do we really look at his coming that way? That he's going to take us out of this toilet. That's pretty much what the world is. is a toilet. It stinks. But there's lost people. They don't realize it. Christians. Some Christians, they don't realize it. Because they're still living uh, for self or for friends or for family. When he comes, we should be praise God, praise God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're going home. Right. This is not our home. Right. This is only a temporary uh, spot for us to be at right now, to choose where we want to have home. Right. You want home in heaven? <laughs> praise God. Obey the Lord. Be in his will. You want to go to home to hell? Do your own thing. Right. That's pretty much what it is. Verse 43. But know this. But know this. This is what Jesus is saying. But know this. That if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Amen. 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 When the Lord says, know this. I would think it's pretty important because yeah. he, I mean, he's saying, know this. So it must be pretty, pretty important that we know that he's coming. The good man is the, the good man is the head of the house who's always watching, who's always watching, which will make it hard for a thief to break into. Yeah. And that's us. The good man, the head of the house, we should always, which is, who is the head of the house? The man. He is the head of the house. He's head over the, the, his wife and the kids. He's 
like I've said before, he has a great responsibility. And one of those responsibilities is to watch. I mean, we're all to watch, but especially the head of the house is to watch. Watch out for his family. Amen? Mm -hmm. Make sure they're walking with the Lord. And if they're not, show them in the scriptures. In the scriptures, show them, hey, look, this is what the Lord says about whatever. Yeah. Show them, show the wife or the kids with the scriptures, hey, the Lord said. And then after he warns them of what the Lord says, then it's between them and the Lord if they correct themselves of whatever they're saying or doing. Be ready. Be ready. Know this. I'm coming. I'm coming. The things we read in verse 38 about eating and drinking, this is fine. This is fine. As long as we don't put it before the Lord. As long as we don't do this before the Lord. Ignoring the warnings that he's given us. Oh, you want to eat, drink, get married? Praise God. There's nothing wrong with that. We need that. But don't put it before the Lord. Meaning, all you do is eat, all you do is drink. Well, not all you do. You're getting married all the time, which some do. But... We're supposed to put the Lord first. As long as we put him first, these things are not sin. Right. They become sin when we're not putting Jesus first, above all. Amen? That's when they become sin. Verse 45, who, who, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Jesus said, who, who is going to believe? Amen. Amen. Who's going to believe? He already said, it's our lifestyle on if we believe or not. Now, they remind us what Jesus said. What Jesus said in Matthew 7, 23. You want to sleep? Well, Matthew 7, 23. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The verses above says that these people say, they say, there's people out there who say, which the verse above this shows it, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in, in your name? He's speaking about Christians who haven't totally given their heart to the Lord. He's speaking to Christians, well, not Christians, He's speaking to religious people that go to church but then Monday through Saturday they're doing their own thing. That's who he's speaking to you. Two, he's saying, I never knew you. Depart from me. I never knew you because you never knew me. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Praise God. He wants us to know him. To know him. Right. And the only way we can know him is through our own Bible study, studying, and having a teacher and having a preacher. Amen? That's the way we know him. In verse 46, Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Amen? Blessed is the Christian who is doing the will of the Lord. Doing the, doing the will of the Lord. Then say believing. Doing. And what does believe mean? To commit, to trust in the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's what it means. Verse 48. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Here's another kind of Christian. The Lord calls him evil. Or lost people. He, but he can be to calling, he could be talking about Christians here. They say with themselves, they, they don't tell other people because they don't believe, oh, he's, they've been saying he's coming. Uh, mm -hmm. No, he's coming. I know they've been saying it, but sooner or later it's going to happen. Amen? Yeah. But they tell people, they don't tell people because they don't believe he's coming. Yeah. They, I mean, they've been saying this for over 100 years, but like I said last time, <clears throat> Sin 
used to be in the closet. Sex before marriage. Oh, that was really looked down upon. Now, sex before marriage is a, has become a normal way of life. Mm-hmm. Homosexuals, they used to be in the closet. Are they in the closet now? Mm-hmm. No, they're out in the open. Like I said before, we got it on TV. Aver- uh, commercials, on movies, they show homosexuals, gays, lesbians, like it's nothing. Mm-hmm. Yes, Time is getting closer. From last week, what we read about what's going on in schools and other things, and what I'm telling you right now, time the Lord is coming. The Antichrist, like I said last week, I believe he's here already. We have Antichrists, the spirit of Antichrist is here already, the Lord said. But the Antichrist, I believe he's already here. Now, I'm telling you this is what I believe, and this is why I believe it. This teaching is why I believe it. I truly, truly believe, like the Lord, the Lord always gives me my teachings, my preachings, my sermons. He, I always, I don't even have to go to him. When I finish one, he gives me another one. He gives it to me because it's stuff that I've already, uh, have read about, studied, or heard other men of God, preachers, preachers that are men of God that I trust, that they are men of God. They preach the word of God. It just, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain because he just gives it to me. I hear him, still small voice, which it talks about in the Old Testament, still small voice. That's how I hear him when he tells me, Jesse, this is what I want you to preach next. Amen. Amen. And that's what I do. And as he's, and as I'm studying, he gives me what I need. All these scriptures, all these scriptures i just given you or even on the other teachings, the Lord gave me those scriptures. The Lord did. I didn't come up with these. The Lord gave them to me. Amen? Amen. I am led by the Spirit. I am led by the Spirit of God to preach, to teach whatever it is He wants me to do on Sundays. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this, with the, he, the, the preaching on deception, we need that. We needed that. We needed to know that there's deception in the world, and not only in the world, but in churches. We have deception. We have men that, are, that deceive people in the church. We have that today. They need to, then he gave me my next preaching was on let's get serious about the Lord. And I didn't know it was going to take nine parts, but he gave me everything I need to show y'all, to teach y'all, to preach y'all, and me, hey, we need to get serious. We need to get serious. Quit playing church. I've said that over and over. Quit playing church. Get serious about the Lord. We come to church on Sunday and Monday, we just go about our regular routine. That's not becoming a new creature. That's not becoming a new person. Old things are passed away. You don't keep doing the same old thing over and over. Now we live every day onto the Lord. Every day. Every day is the Lord's day. Amen? Amen. Every day. The Lord is preparing us. He's given us everything we need to prepare us for his coming. Amen. Amen. So I would take these teachings, these preachings, I would take them very serious because the Lord is coming. I don't know what day, what hour, but he does tell us time is near. He tells, he does tell us that. So we need to pay attention to it. Time is near. And this ain't, he has more. He's given me more. This is, this is not it. So I'll start again next Sunday and preach more on He is coming. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're such a good God. You're so good to us. You warn us. You warn us about everything that's going to come into our life. Whatever it may be, you warn us. You want us to be ready for whatever temptations come our way. You warn us by saying, hey, get close to me. Get close to me, and the devil will run from you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your words, Father. Thank you. Thank you for preparing us now. 
You've been preparing us for week, for months now that you're coming. So, Father God, let us have the ears to hear. Let us have the ears to hear spiritually that you are coming. I believe that with all my heart, Lord. I know you. I mean, we all know you're coming, but I believe you're coming can happen any time now. We're not looking for no signs to happen before you return. Now, for the for your second coming, yeah, there's other there's things that need to happen yet. But as far as you coming for for your people, your Christians, your believers to escape your wrath, which is going to be here during the tribulation, you've given us the opportunity to escape that, Lord. We thank you. We don't only thank you, but we praise you, Father God. Mm -hmm for opening our eyes and showing us, hey, my children, I'm coming for you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.